Stadium in the city of Sofia, in the heart of the Balkans, 55,000 drenched Bulgarians and a few Scots besides in this stadium to see the match that will decide who goes to Germany next summer for the European Championship final. The Bulgarians need to be reminded, need only one point from this match and they will be through. We're looking at Bujidar Iskrenov, one of the strikers for the Bulgarian team, a team that shows several changes from the lineup in Dublin and the most significant of those as you may have heard Georgi Dimitrov the Bulgarian captain injured in France with his club Saint-Étienne and unable to play his place goes to Krasimir Bezinski who's winning his 12th cap we're looking now at Boris Mikhailov the Bulgarian goalkeeper who missed the game against Ireland in Dublin because of injury and you can see the strapping on his thigh indicative of that Mikhailov returns in place of the man who had such a disaster there Ananiev so Mikhailov back in goal Bezinski replacing Dimitrov at the heart of the defence and there's another change featuring a man who came out of the sub in Dublin, Peter Alexandrov, who replaced Voinov in Dublin. He keeps his place in the Bulgarian lineup, and Voinov is a sub. And it should be pointed out that uh, one of the regular frontmen for the Bulgarian team, Lachis Aftanev, is missing a long-term injury problem there. He missed the game in Dublin too. Scotland without Ali McCoy, Sean Durant, Richard Goff, and without also Jim Bett, and with Eric Black and Bo Johnson unavailable because of club commitments in France, starting with a, a new strike force of Graham Sharp and Brian McClare. Twelve internationals they've played between them. They've yet to score for Scotland. And there they are, over the ball, on the halfway line, as the Austrian referee Helmut Kohl, a very famous name for a politician, maybe not so much for a referee, but this man very definitely on the FIFA list. Blows the whistle, and Scotland playing left to right, gets this game underway. The Scots in familiar navy blue shirts and those uh, still rather strange white shorts with a blue band around them and Bulgaria in their home strip of white and green with red facing it seems that always when there's a big game on in this Vasilevsky stadium it pours it was a fine morning in Sofia but the rain came down while we were having lunch and it hadn't stopped since memories of Ireland's visit here and memories too for me of a visit nine years ago when Northern Ireland came and in similar weather conditions won 2-0 so the Bulgarians though they appear it are not actually invincible at home but they haven't lost here in three and a half years since West Germany won on this ground in 1984 and the Scots haven't won away from home since beating Israel and Tel Aviv at the start of 86 that puts it all in perspective for the Bulgarians mounting their first attack it's dug out there by Paul McStay but not very successfully. Oh, and uncertainty in the Scots defence, and Leighton scored. Jim Leighton saw it late, but did what he had to do. A rasping shot to test any goalkeeper, coming out of nothing, but the keeper was perfectly positioned, and it was his position saved him. But Bulgaria, in just the second minute of the game, posing the threat. All the way back to Ilyev. And now Bulgaria with their left back Petrov. That's Alexandrov. And a corner to the Bulgarians in the second in the space of a minute. Now the Bulgarian crowd rising to their team. A team that's qualified for five World Cup finals but has yet to make it to the final phase of the European Championship. But needing, as we say, just a point here to make sure of that. Here's Stoichkov with the corner. That was Bezinski bundled off it. Aitken for Scotland. And now Brian McClare. And McClare running out of options. And dispossessed by Sadkov. And the chance for Boris Mikhailov to get the feel of the ball. Half past five on a damp evening in Sofia. And Scotland here playing for places, it must be said, in Andy Roxburgh's World Cup plans. They, of course, can't possibly qualify for the European finals now, but there's a lot of pride at stake for the young Lions. There's Andy Roxburgh nearest to us. 
he said he was going to put out his, his older hands to begin with and if he needed some younger fresher legs then he had them on the bench for later in the game here's a chance the big man Alexandrov just couldn't connect and Jim Layton suggesting that the defence calms down that's Peter Alexandrov he came on as a second half substitute at Lansdowne Road and has held his place in the starting line up here Jim Layton, the Scots goalkeeper, beaten by Mark Lawrenson at Hampden Park, if you need reminding. And here, between the posts for the Scots for the 38th time. Steve Nicholl nudging it on. Graham Sharp looking for McClare. Aitken goes in. The last man back, Iliev. underneath that and has found Ian Wilson and the Everton man to the left back Morris Malpass and that's a foul the legs taken from beneath the Dundee United man Scotland's free kick and again a shrill blast from the Austrian Another free kick against the home team. Meeting, as you'd expect, with the disapproval of the crowd. That's McLeish. Sharp rising. And now McStay. And this is Gary Gillespie playing for the Scots for the, just the second time, the Liverpool man. Stevie Clark. Another of the inexperienced portion of the back four. Gillespie, it must be said, would have uh, featured much more in the Scots plans had he not suffered with injury for such a long time. But now at the ripe old age of 27, he can consider himself something of a regular. If such you can be from winning just your second cap. But he is featuring firmly in Andy Roxburgh's plan. Deep football by the Bulgarians. Spread wide for Nikolov. The pitch, as you could see, beating him. That cop. Play forward for Alexandro. It was a good idea. No foul. That cop again. Beaten by Aitken. And now Brian McClare. There's nobody in close attendance. Sharp has pulled wide to the far side. McClare decided to take them on on his own. A bit of height on that might have worked to better effect. But uh, the Scots were slow in getting men forward there. Gillespie and McLeish uh, have a pretty good understanding of the back, it appears. McLeish obviously been given the task of attacking the high ball. Gillespie standing off. McStay to Wilson. Towards Sharp and running for McClare. And Sharp pulls away once again in the middle, wants it high, but that's too close to Mikhailov. And away for the goal kick. It would appear that the rain that's persisted all afternoon has finally vanished. But the remnants of the damp afternoon still to be felt on the turf. It's Petrov. Sadkov. Now with Stoitskov. And played forward for East Krenov. And the flag raised. The infringement spotted by the linesman on the far side. Free kick to Bulgaria. Headed out by Aitken. 
Stadtkopf. And now Stoichkov. Stoichkov trying to find a way through for the shot. But it was blocked by Aitken, and here he goes, but he's the furthest shot forward. McClare is support, Aitken wants it through, but Aitken is offside. The flag was raised. The Bulgarians just moved out in the line, and Aitken has made a good run forward from the deep. Just caught offside as the return pass was played. But the shape of the game, really as expected, Bulgaria taking it to Scotland, Scotland relying on the break from the deep. A misunderstanding there, McLeish giving over to the goal stay, and in the end, Fortune favoured him. Mal pass, and Paul McStay. Sharp on for Wilson. Malpas offering support. And still Malpas. And this time they have met up. And that was cut out there by Iskrinov, who had come back into a defensive position. And Scotland get the corner. But that was good build-up up the Scottish left. Uh, Malpas, a fullback who liked to attack. And Ian Wilson, who's been playing in the Kevin Sheedy role for Everton of late. But we've now got Paul McStay with the corner for Scotland. Nobody putting pressure on Sirakov. Up to East Krenov. And the free kick awarded against the Scots. Insisting that East Krenov indulged in a little dive. Chance for you to uh, test your understanding of the Cyrillic alphabet. But that is the Bulgarian team. And substitute. And confirmation in our own script. Ten minutes gone, no goals as yet. Scotland living dangerously, that early shot saved by Jim Layton. The Bulgarian coach we're looking at, Risto Mladinov. He's in charge of the team for the third time. An advocate of open football, having played himself in Hungary in, during the 50s. Believe it or not, is Scotland. Andy Roxburgh, whose name was last in the list. And a substitute bench. That includes Henry Smith, the Hearts goalkeeper, Derek White, the Celtic defender, Pat Nevin, and Gordon Jury of Chelsea. And Gary Mackay of Heart of Midlothian. Interesting spelling of McClare, number 10. matches away from completing their program in uh, group seven of the European Championship after this they have Luxembourg to play in the Grand Duchy on the second of next month and after that they'll be watching keenly the World Cup draw to see who they draw in the uh, qualifying stages for the 1990 tournament which will be held in Italy Alexandrov for Bulgaria Petrov and all the way across to Nikolov run back by McStay in bravely there and it's fallen for Sharp McClare is in the middle the Bulgarian came off worse in that challenge Wilson McStay and Graham Sharp unable to control it but the Bulgarian still down that was cut out by Stevie Clark Nichols colliding with Stoichkov 
who is being admonished by the referee. Nicole determined not to let him get away, but uh, I don't think it was as serious as the Bulgarian is making it appear. Meanwhile, there's another Bulgarian on the deck. I had a picture after that challenge with Paul McStay, and really one of those 50-50 balls. This is the incident involving Steve Nichol, who, if anything, only caught him on the, on the heels when he went through there. The other was potentially more serious. I felt uh, Paul McStay very bravely in on a, on a ball that might even have been 49-51. But uh, it was the Bulgarian who maybe held back a little bit in the challenge and came off the worst. Deutschkopf is all right, but there's attention elsewhere on the park for the other Bulgarian who's down. Bulgaria will resume with a free kick. The man with the captain's armband is Nasko Sirakov. He has assumed the captaincy in the absence of uh, Dimitrov. Sirakov, of course, key man against Ireland when side lost 2-1 here. He dispossessed Mick McCarthy to set up the goal for Anil Zadkov and was then the man who was uh, involved in the incident with Kevin Moran that led to the penalty. Injury problem appears to have passed. And Bulgaria can resume with a free kick for the foul by Steve Nichol. Petrov. Ishkrenov. And he got through the gap well, but the cross left something to be desired. Goal kick to Jim Leighton in Scotland. Quarter of an hour of the match gone, it's still Bulgaria nil, Scotland nil. That state of affairs that if it were to persist to the end would mean that Bulgaria would qualify for Germany and the Republic of Ireland would be runners up in second place. clearing and now McStay oh he did well Nickel, Aitken and Scotland getting out of that little corner with some considerable style that's played up towards McClare and wisely opting out of that challenge and winning the throw in Gary Gillespie the last man back Firmly for his Liverpool clubmate Steve Nichol. Throw to Bulgaria. This is Scotland's uh, first visit to Sofia. Played Bulgaria only twice before. Of course, their previous meeting in this tournament was a scoreless draw. The Scots' first match in this competition, the 1988 European Championship. They played Bulgaria nine years ago in Glasgow and beat them 2-1 so they're defending an unbeaten record against the men from the Balkans Ilya collision there Malpas all right but the Bulgarian stayed down it's now Steve Nichol just to find a way through Sirakov and he's been off unable to keep his feet off the head of Mitrov. And Steve Clark, the former St. Mirren and now Chelsea pull back, takes the throw for Scotland. One of the new brigade for the Scots.
That's a goal kick to Bulgaria. Is Clark one of the new young men in Andy Roxburgh's plans? Big Lee reviews for his performances with Chelsea. And now Ian Wilson. Sharp. He gave up the chase and then decided it wasn't in fact Sharp, it was McStay. Decided maybe he'd better get involved, but by then the ball was back. Stoichkov looking for East Grenoble. Gary Gillespie, cool as you like. Clark. Sullivan goes astray. Peter Petrov, the Bulgarian left back. The loose one from Stoichkov. Paul McStay. Now McLeish. Aitken to Clark. They used the square inch as well there. Aitken forward for Sharp, and that's run for him. And McClare is in the middle. Towards Brian McClare, but headed away for another chance for Sharp. And the keeper having to look acrobatic. But that was well played by Graham Sharp off the right. The cross headed away in some desperation, and then the second attempt well saved by Mikhailo. Well, Graham Sharp, I mentioned the statistic that uh, neither he nor McClare had scored for Scotland, Sharp in his ninth international now. But he said, uh, and quite rightly, that Ali McCoyst hadn't been a noted goal scorer. Then he got two against Hungary and one against Belgium and suddenly it was all going right for him and they're, they're missing him. He said he felt he only needed the break and the goals would come for him too. It's Graham Sharp, Everton and Scotland. And he got the knockdown there but Nicol had taken up the wrong position to uh, take advantage of it at any rate. Quite still in the stadium, no breeze to speak of at all, and as I said, I was saying the rain has uh, vanished for the time being. What has left its legacy in terms of a greasy top surface. And the distinct uh, chill in the air. The sun disappears in this part of the world at this time of year. It becomes quite cold. back to Mikhailov. Midway through the first half, a quarter of the match is gone. And the score as it was at the start, Bulgaria nil, Scotland nil. Stoichkov to Sadkov. Sirakov, the captain. Sadkov again, beaten by Aitken. Sharp in to win it back for Scotland. Nickel now. And it's Gary Gillespie. McClare. That was meant for Nickel, but Nickel had just gone offside a fraction. And another free kick to Bulgaria. against Morris Malpass. And 
Armin Nikolov plays his football in Sweden. For the other fullback, Petrov. Stoichkov. Petrov. Alexandrov offside this time. Free kick to Scotland. make the contact played from the deep to try and catch the Scottish defense does and the Bulgarian appear to be backing in to Alex McLeish but that wasn't how the Austrian referee saw it So, Stoichkov wins a free kick in a very dangerous position from a Scottish point of view. And all 11 of Andy Roxburgh's team have matched between ball and goal. The preliminary war has four men in it. Now five. McClare on the end, Roy Aitken doing the organising there. The referee wanted to pull back ever more. But now he's happy and the play can resume. So it's caught. And that wasn't very far away and it took a touch. The referee saw a touch and it's a corner to Bulgaria. Leighton appeared a fraction late with the dive but then if it did take a deflection as the referee says it did then perhaps the dive only looked late because the ball was whistling further away from where he thought it was going Stoichkov took the free kick Stoichkov will take the corner former boxer he's going to send that in to Jim Leighton's area like a curling left hook but one that carried no menace got himself far enough forward but there was no one to assist and the ball skidded off his head. Here it is again, Stoichkov. Well it was the nearest touch if it did go off Brian McClare. Leighton was uh, down well enough with it from that angle it certainly confirmed it. The ball was whistling away. Aitken. Nickel realizing early on it was a fruitless chase. That's off for Bulgaria now. He's thrown off. So he's gone. Rakoff continuing the run. Steve Clark cutting it out. Iskarov, Stoichkov, Tatkov, Stevianov. You can see what they were trying to do there. Just tries to open the Scottish defence and release the man. Then to get in behind him off the right, but. There was too much pace on the chip. Simeonov sent over the top. Danger averted once again. And that is running in the direction of McClare. But Nikolov there to police the situation. Ian Wilson putting pressure on him. The ball's out, and that's a corner to Scotland. Well won by Ian Wilson. And can they work something here? They've sharp in the middle. McClare has gone there too, but they've taken the short corner. Wilson back to Aitken. Breaks for Wilson again. 